The base model MacBook Air versus the 14 inch MacBook Pro base model that just came out with the brand new M1 chip, which better? Let's get into it. All right, so this could be a long video. So we're gonna get into stuff really quickly. If you're looking at the M1 MacBook Air base model and you're looking at the 14 inch, basically the brand new MacBook Pro that just came out, base model, there's a huge difference in cost. I'm gonna get into that, number one. There's gonna be a huge difference in features, number two, but maybe not that much. Cost might make it justified to get the M1 Air. It also could be a huge difference in performance. I got 10 different benchmarks, 10 of them, to show you all different things. Cinebench, graphics, photo, you know, photo editing, stuff like that, video editing. Stay tuned for that. I'll have it all listed in the video description. So I'm gonna go through, if you can pick each part you wanna see the, the different benchmarks. I got charts, everything coming up. So get into the video, we'll see what those are. All right. I'm going to start though with kind of the basic features. I have an M1 MacBook Air right here. I have a friend that has the 14 inch base model M1 MacBook Pro. The M1 MacBook Air base model, it has 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of, of SSD. The other one's going to unfair advantage because it's got 16 gigs of RAM and it's got 512 SSD. So those are some differences. Does the cost justify it? Let's get into it. We'll break it all down. 10 different benchmarks. <laughs> Let's go. All right, number one, price. Look at the difference here. I got a nice, nice bright chart for you. $899, which is, is about what it's on sale right now, around Christmas right now, for the M1 MacBook Air. $1949 is the cheapest I found really right now, the base model 14-inch MacBook Pro with the brand new M1 Pro chip. Look at the difference there. That's over double. So is it, you gotta put that in perspective. When watching this video, Make sure you understand this. Also make sure the M1 MacBook Air is faster than a lot of the previous models. So you, do need, you really need this much speed or not. Let's break it down with a huge graph right here I'm gonna get into. All right, this graph is huge. I'm gonna go through it quickly. I talk fast, so I apologize. You can also skip, go to the description. You can see all the benchmarks coming up as well and skip to those. But let's look at this chart here. This is a difference between the 13 inch M1 MacBook uh, Air and then basically the 14 inch MacBook Pro base model. Let's go through it quickly. What are the key differences? First of all, eight CPUs on the M1 MacBook Air versus eight on the 14 inch. GPU cores are gonna be seven on the Air. It should say GPU, they're not CPU, but seven on the Air and it should say 14 there on the actual 14 inch MacBook Pro. So the GPUs are double, and that's a huge difference there. So double the GPU cores. The weight of it, 2.8 pounds on the Air versus 3.5 pounds on the 14 inch base model. Think about that, that's a big difference there if you're carrying this around, plus the tapered ends of the actual MacBook Air make it a lot more convenient to slip into a book, you know, book bag or something. So if portability is a big thing, the Air may have that one one. All right, noise and stuff. Fanless design on the M1 Air, I love it. I had a video, check out my prior videos. It's one of my best features on it. There's two fans built into the MacBook Pro. It allows some better processing later in the benchmark, so we'll get into that. So there's some differences you gotta weigh there as well. Ports are a big one. M1 MacBook Air only has basically two Thunderbolt 3 ports and then an audio port, where the 14-inch MacBook Pro has a lot more. It's got three, so another three Thunderbolt 3 ports, another extra one there. It's got basically an HDMI, SD card slot, MagSafe for the charging, so you don't have to take up a charging port, and then audio jack just like the other one. So it's got a lot more ports there. That's something to consider as well for the cost difference. All right, if you're gonna be working from home, the MacBook Air can only connect to one, basically one external monitor. 14-inch can do two. That's a big difference there as well. All right, so screens are gonna be a lot different too. So we, we're talking a 13 inch, obviously, versus a 14 inch. You get a little bit more screen real estate, not much of a difference. Webcam, 720p on this one, MacBook Air, versus a 1080p on the MacBook Pro 14 inch, the brand new one. Is there a huge difference? Look at some other videos out there. They're not, not extreme, but there is some clarity differences as well. So if that's important to you, that could be a consideration, but not, not for $1,000. All right, brightness is a big one. So this is, gets about 400 nits on the MacBook Air, and the other one gets about 500. Now, it can go up higher than that in bursts and stuff, but 500 is usually where it stays at. That's just from real world testing. And so it's, a lot, it's noticeably brighter, but not terribly brighter. You know, that's basically what I can say. This is bright enough. If you're doing a lot of outside stuff, you may want to go with the, the 500 nit one, which is a 14 inch. All right, screens, 60 hertz here in the M1 MacBook Air versus the brand new 120 on the 14 inch. Keep in mind though, in the 14 inch, the 120 is only used at certain times when they figure out when it should be. So most of the time, it'll probably be at 60, maybe a little higher than that. But all, sometimes when you're doing things where you need 120, it could show up. 
And then the notch. No notch on this. If you don't like notches, obviously you might get the MacBook Air. The 14 inch Pro has a notch, but it might be for something later like Face ID. It also gets a little bit less bezels and stuff, so if that's important. But notch versus not notch can be something people really hate, so you gotta figure that one out as well. All right, disc. Disc is a huge one here. Real world testing, I can't notice a difference at all. So, but look at the paper. 2100 writes, 2800 reads on the Air, super fast. Faster than last models, right? Intel models, but on the new 14 inch, Double, 4,600 writes, 4,800 reads, huge difference, but in real world testing, I mean, some of the benchmarks might show that, but not with real world stuff. Trackpad, smaller trackpad on the air here. The other one's got a little bit larger trackpad, but they're both huge, so again, you gotta weigh that. Do you really need something that big? Touch bar, obviously they both don't have touch bars anymore, so that's kind of a wash there. And also the keyboards, the keyboards are almost exactly the same, it seems, they feel to me exactly the same. They have a different back, like it's one of them's black behind it, one of them's silver, but they feel the same to me. All right, speakers, if, if audio is important to you, externally the M1 Air here is phenomenal, right? At least I thought it was. The other one though, the 14 inch MacBook Pro is better. It's got better woofers, better tweeters, it's got more bass. It's also got a better headphone jack to kind of let your headphones sound a little bit better. So if audio is super important, like you're, you know, that's what you do for a living, the 14 inch probably has that one one. All right, batteries are a little unusual. I'll get through this quick, but this has got a smaller battery as far as you know the size of it. The 14 inch MacBook Pro has a little bit bigger battery, but for my real world testing, when you're doing small tasks, just like looking at the web and stuff, the Air actually has more hours of on-screen time. I, you know, from what I've been getting, I get more hours out of this. Why, I don't know. When I do more extensive testing, as far as doing things like video editing or high, you know, high load GPU, high load CPU, the 14 inch gets a little bit more time. So keep that in mind. They're about a wash depending on what you do, but if you're doing a lot of high end stuff, the 14 inch may have a little bit better battery. All right, now's the fun part. Now we got 10 different benchmarks. I'm gonna kind of fly through them to keep the videos timed down a little bit, but you can pause it whenever you wanna see it. Benchmark, Geekbench 5, single core. M1 MacBook Air Base, 1746. The 14 inch MacBook Pro, 1762. Almost no difference there, very, very close, obviously because they're just using single core. Multi-core is a big difference here. So multi-core, M1 MacBook Air, 7735 versus 9820 on the 14 inch. So you can see the difference there. It's, it's it, you know, depending on what you do, it can make a big difference, but it's not substantial. So multi-core is definitely faster on the 14 inch. All right, another common test is Cinebench R23. It's basically for 3D rendering. So let's look at the difference here. M1 MacBook Air Base, 6788, 6788 versus 14 inch MacBook Pro Base, 9508, so 9508. Big difference there again in numbers. In real world use though, I'm not so sure. We'll kind of wrap it up at the end of the video, but here's what it is for Cinebench 23. So Geekbench 5 Metal, let's take a look at this one. This is gonna be basically a GPU test. So for the M1 MacBook Air, we're at 18,884, not too shabby, but let's look at the 14 inch, it blows it away. 35,431, so you're talking close to double there. GPU, obviously there's a lot more cores in there, 14 versus the seven, actually double, and that's the difference there. All right, this is a fun one, it's a 3D, Mark Wildlife Extreme Unlimited Test, and this is gonna be frames per second. We ran that test. On the M1 MacBook Air, it's 27.6, and on the 14 inch, we get 55.3. So for gaming and stuff, even though this is not really meant for gaming either system, more or less, it's a lot faster on the 14 inch, almost double there as well. For all the audio people out there, we did a benchmark on Logic Benchmark Test. Total tracks, so it's, you can check it out online if you wanna see what the Logic Benchmark test is. Basically, M1 MacBook Air was able to do 87 tracks, while the 14-inch MacBook Pro Base, 114. You know, a pretty big difference there as well. Obviously, very few people do that many tracks at once. It's kind of a crazy test, but uh, that's what it's capable of. All right, Final Cut Pro. So if you're doing some very light workloads, and you have, like I do, I have a couple layers, just some audio tracks built in. It's basically H.264. I'm only seeing a 5% difference between the Air and the 14 inch. The 14 inch is 5% faster on rendering everything. That's on very, very light loads that don't really push the systems. So it's not much there. All right, Final Cut Pro, again, H.264 on heavy workloads, tons of LUNs, color changes, this, the, everything going on in these things, multiple layers. I actually saw up to a 59% faster render on the 14 inch than I did on the MacBook Air. So again, it makes a huge difference on what the complexity of the videos are, and it can make a big difference. So video editors have to take a look at the 14 inch for sure. 
All right, Adobe Lightroom photo editing. So we did a test on that, and we just did a test on how fast it is, basically the complete basic tasks. And we saw, though, that it was about 59% faster on the 14-inch than the M1 MacBook Air. So 59% faster, and why is that? You got double the RAM there. RAM helps in this kind of a test. Not a complete fair comparison, but if you double the RAM on the other system and what have you, it's going to be a little bit closer, but not as close because the RAM is faster on the 14-inch. And then Xcode. So people that are developers, let's get into this. I did some Xcode testing for developers. We did a basic test on this. And what we saw with the exact same tests on both systems, 32% faster on the 14 inch than the M1 MacBook Air. So you're getting 32% perform, you know, performance differences there. And uh, so if you're doing development, that can make a huge difference over the course of a year for sure. All right, so let's wrap this up. So what do, what do I think based off these numbers? I think for most people, for, for the average user, for the school person, for the person that maybe does a little bit of work on it from home and stuff, the M1 Air is way more than they need, way more. It's a perfect system half the cost, less than half the cost in a lot of cases, get the M1 Air. If you are somebody that has very specific needs, you're a developer, obviously. You're, you're not only just a YouTube editor for videos because you can do it perfectly fine with the Air, but you do video editing for kind of a corporation where you need multiple really complex edits or you're a kind of a high-end editor on YouTube, then go with the 14-inch. You know, that's obviously a case there. Or if you're a 3D render, something like that, go with the 14-inch. But like I said, it's, it's almost, you know, for the double in cost, you might as well buy two MacBook Airs, give one to your wife, give one to your mother, whatever you want to do. You can buy over two of these for the price of one. It's just not worth it in everyday use. It's my, you know, obviously, if you know you need it, I guess the best way to say it is you know you need it. And that's based off the, you know, benchmarks I just showed you. That time can save people tons of time, obviously, over a year. But if you're not doing hundreds of tracks, you're not doing video edits every other day, you're doing them once a month or once a week, it makes no difference, obviously, for the money. Save your money, invest it. You know, uh, it's just not worth it. That's my take on it. So I hope everyone likes these videos. I hope uh, you can subscribe to my channel. I'm a very small channel and I do these things out of my own time. I want to help, you know, try to grow it, but I want to help people out as well. Just help me grow it out by subscribing, clicking the like button if you can. We will talk to everybody soon. I hope you guys like the content again. Peace.